Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about our continuity of learning plan. We'd like to welcome students back to the 2020 school year, although being in a situation in which we don't really want it to be. However, we're going to make the best of this situation that we have, and we're going to tell you a little bit about what we plan on doing throughout the course of uh, the period of time in which we're off of school. Today, we learned that Governor Wolf has extended our school closure to a period of time as indefinite, meaning we don't know when we're going to come back to school. However, the great part of all this is that we're prepared to not go back to school at this time. We're prepared to offer the education that we do here at Richland High School via the online virtual environment. And we're going to do our best to do so. During this time period of uncertainty and, and difficulty for everyone, the Richland High School aims to be the area of structure and stability and safety for our students and their families. And that's our pledge to you. We know that you are not the teachers uh, as, as the parents in the district, and we're going to do our best to make sure that our educational platform is giving to the parents and the students in a way that is very clear and understood and easy for them to work through during this time period. I would like to take a moment to thank our teaching staff and our administrative team for working so hard and diligently in getting this most difficult task off the ground and running. We are well aware that there's going to be some hiccups throughout this process, but they have done a tremendous job in taking this battle head on and working through all of the difficulties and problems of putting their curriculum online and working through areas that are completely uncharted for many of them. But again, they're doing a phenomenal job and I'm very, very proud of where our teaching staff is at this point. And while we're very proud of all the hard work, we do know, like Mr. Regan said, there are going to be some hiccups. And we'd ask you to be, please be patient with um, us as administration, our teachers, just like we're going to be, we promise to be very patient with you as families and, and as well as your students in trying to figure out how best to go about this education. We know this is new to everyone, including us, and no one really asked to be in this situation. So we're just going to ask for your patience and know that we're working very diligently to provide the best education we can for our entire families and our, our families and our students here at Richland. Part of this education is going to be asynchronous. And what we mean by asynchronous learning is a term I think you'll hear a lot over the next couple weeks. And asynchronous means that it's not in sync, right? It's not from 7 to 3.30 every single day. We don't expect you to be on any particular class at any particular time because every single family situation is different. So we want you to be able to get your learning in every single day, but some days it might be in the morning, some days it might be in the evening, some days it might be in the afternoon. Whatever is best for you and your family and your student at that time is what's the best learning environment they can have at this point in time. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about asynchronous and that it doesn't mean a specific period of time. So I think the one thing that I wanted to point out too is that our teachers are also in the same boat that many of you are where they're forced to be at home and their families are forced to be at home. So they are asynchronously teaching these courses as well. So I think it's vital for everyone to understand that they are in the same boat that you are, but they are, again, working through that and doing everything they can to make this meaningful, a meaningful experience in general. So one of the things that I wanted to describe for everybody, I know one of the big questions for students right now is our third nine weeks and uh, the, the fourth quarter itself. So we'll start with the third nine weeks and how we're gonna end the third nine weeks and then move into that fourth quarter. Grades will count for the third nine weeks up to and including April the 9th. However, our grading period has ended on March 13th. So to be clear with that, March 13th was now our end of the third nine weeks. Any materials that a student may have that's outstanding or maybe a teacher hasn't graded yet or whatever the case may be, those items will be accepted through April 9th. Those grades will be historical April 15th. So basically your report cards would be out on April the 15th. So all of the grades count. Everything that you've done up to this point, anything that needs scored will be scored and our teachers will do their best to work with you if there's a situation that arises where, where an assignment may not have been uh, able to be turned in or completed due to the result of the coronavirus uh, pandemic and, and the problems that arose with it. Moving into quarter four, our plan is to go to a pass-fail system. Our focus is simple in the set of circumstances that we're being given right now. And the focus is to allow our students to focus on learning, not necessarily assessment. We want to make it so that our kids are prepared for whatever is next. 
Should that be when they come back to school this year? Should that be next year when they move to the grade ahead of them? We want them to be prepared. We want them to be ready. We're focused on learning and meaningful instruction, not as much on assessment and difficulties that arise in the day-to-day -day work of a regular school. In regards to our uh, fourth nine weeks, again, uh, at this time, we have a lot of things that are unclear to us. So with finals and other stuff like that, as information comes available to us, we will provide you with updates. But for now, quarter four is going to be pass-fail. And with the pass-fail expectation, we do still have attendance expectations. We do want you to have learning. Although it is asynchronous, which means it doesn't have to occur at a specific time or a specific location, we do expect there to be learning pretty much every single day. Now, if there, we do need to know if there's something that comes up with your family situation where your children can't learn for the day. So if you have something where a child isn't feeling well and they're not able to log on, we'd like you to give the school call and let them know, let us know, that your child won't be attending just like you would uh, for a normal school day. Now, we know for that it's, this uh, learning to take place, you do need some sort of a device. Uh, today, we did do uh, Chromebook handouts here at the elementary school. If you were not able to get a Chromebook today and you still need one, we'd ask you to like you to give a call to the high school office at 266-6081. One of my favorite parts of the last two weeks is actually getting to see uh, all the students and their families coming back to get the Chromebooks today. That was one of the nicer parts of the last couple of weeks is just getting to see those smiling faces, getting to see the kids coming back. We really truly enjoyed that as, as kids came back here today to get their Chromebooks and, and the devices. Um, so uh, Mr. Masorjak talked about how to get a Chromebook if you didn't uh, already get your Chromebook uh, and you need one. One of the problems that has also arisen is some of our families uh, don't have the ability to have Wi-Fi at home. If that's a problem, we've partnered with Atlantic Broadband to help provide our families in need with Wi-Fi during this period of uncertainty. So if that's something uh, that you have, that, that um, a difficulty that you face, again, please call the main office and we can get you in touch with Atlantic Broadband, but we're very appreciative to the support that they've given our families during this time period of uncertainty. One of the things that I know will arise, and I do not want it to be a source of frustration and anxiety for our families, is truly the tech issues that you may encounter there are not going to be flawless and seamless transitions here. There are going to be mistakes made. There are going to be difficulties encountered. But we want to do our best. We're offering our support. We want you to start with our teaching staff and trying to talk to them first about what's going on with the specific issue within their classroom here. And if it's something that uh, they cannot fix, then we can help you out, certainly as an administrative team mm -hmm. or a technology staff uh, here at the school district. So again, we do not believe that this is going to go off seamlessly. We are fully aware that we're dealing with some difficulties that will occur in every given situation, but we're prepared to help you along the way. We are going to be patient with you. We just ask that you're patient with us. And with that communication side is how do we get a hold of our teachers, right? What is the best way? I think right now in uh, this time, the best way to get a hold of a teacher here at the Richland uh, High School is through email. And there's a couple different ways to find a teacher's email. Probably the easiest is if you go to our website, www.richlandsd.com, and you click on the uh, students page, underneath there, there's a link to uh, the uh, staff directory. So please click on the staff directory and you'll be able to find an email for any teacher. Or if you're just writing the email and you're already in, um, if you are signed on with a school Chromebook, there's a good chance as you start to type that teacher's name that it could auto-populate. Or all of our teachers are under their first initial, last name at Richland SD for their email addresses. And so you could uh, contact our, our teachers through email as well. So if a student has materials still left at school, we are, are asking that those students just leave their materials at school unless it's a complete necessity. If it's something that is vital to uh, you as a person or your education in general, please let us know. Our teachers have been made aware that students should not have the expectations that they will have their books. So we're not concerned if a kid doesn't have a workbook or a textbook or whatever the case may be, they are not going to need those things moving forward to the remainder of the year. However, if it's something that is imperative to their learning or some other aspect of their life and they need it out of the school, please call one of us and we'll be able to get that item to the main office where you can come and pick it up. But again, we ask that um, you know, in following the governor's orders, we don't want a whole lot of people here in the buildings, walking through the buildings or anything like that. We will go get your items. We will bring them to the main office 
and we will get them to you that way. So that's one of the things that we wanted to cover in regards to just obtaining those materials. And I know a lot of you have stuff that you want, uh, and at some point we will certainly make arrangements for you to get all those non-essential items. One of the things uh, that I know kids are really anxious about, and rightfully so, are some of the things that I just can't give you answers to at this time. And it really frustrates me that I can't, believe me it does, but uh, th there are things that um, kids want to know, like their ACE courses from uh, Penn Highlands, or their CHS classes from St. Francis, or AP courses in general. Those are some of the things that are really weighing on student minds. I will provide updates as soon as I get those updates. I do not have many updates for those things, but uh, especially pay attention to our social media. I will get you those updates as soon as I possibly can with what specific instructions are for any of those platforms uh, where we offer just a, a different type of education or an extension of our own education at, at Richland. So again, I'm sorry I don't have the answers, but everyone's kind of trying to figure their way through this difficult time period, so they don't have the answers for us. And again, we'll get them to you as soon as we possibly can. And Mr. Regan, as you guys are out there looking for those answers, uh, we do have our student and parents FAQ uh, that is out there as well. We've, that's out there as a Google form. And if you fill those out, we are getting those, those answers to those questions up on our website as quickly as we can. Our administrative team's working hard to answer those questions. And it's a good resource that maybe you have a question that somebody else, else has already asked. You can go on there and look for the answer. And if you don't see it, please uh, feel free to fill out that form and get that to us so we can get you the answers you're looking for or the best answer we can for the time we're in. On top of the FAQ page, we also have just a running timeline of all the different correspondence that the school district has had uh, with our families. So if you want to go check that out, please do so. And again, you can find all that at richlandsd.com. Um, we're getting ready to wrap up here, but one of the things that I hate most about this is how our students have been robbed of so many things that they love and so many of the things that make the high school experience just a great experience that everyone should have. Yes, it's about academics, but we're all about the three A's too, and we're all about the athletics, and we're all about the arts as well. Um, and so many of our kids have been robbed of different sporting events or theater productions or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't have an answer for you as to when those things are gonna go on or if they're gonna go on or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, things like prom and, and graduation in general or whatever the case may be. We don't know what that looks like right now. My pledge to you as our student body is simple. I'm going to give you every sense of normalcy that I possibly can. If that's an alteration to something that I can make happen, then we're going to make it happen. I can't promise you everything except my best effort, Mr. Masorjak's best effort, in trying to make all those things happen. I know those things are sources of anxiety to you. And right now, we're in a situation where we have to focus on controlling what we can control. And I can only control giving you my best effort in trying to figure out our way through uh, rescheduling events or making events happen in general. So again, I know it's weighing on a lot of your minds and it's weighing on my mind as well, but again, you have my pledge that we're gonna do everything we can to make those things happen. Um, before we close, one of the things that I want you to notice is that Mr. Masorjak and I are practicing safe social distancing. And I think that's important and vital for all of us to get through this together. We have to follow the, the guidelines that were being given to us by our, uh, our local state and federal government or, or government in general. You know, stay six feet away from each other. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Practice that social distancing. I know it's a sacrifice that we all need to make, but that is such a vital and important part of, of keeping the COVID-19 epidemic in check. And we want to make sure we're staying as safe as possible but we can't do that unless everyone is practicing these safe habits as often as they possibly can. It's really the fastest way out of this. Uh, so we really want you to pay attention, listen to the news right now, read an article every single day on what's going out there and really take a look at what's going on in the world and what you can do to help bring an end to this so we can get back to the things that we all love, your prom, your graduation, uh, the musical that we were all looking forward to have this spring. And uh, I want you to know, personally, and I know Mr. Regan too, we miss you guys. Uh, the school is just a different place. It doesn't have its soul in it. And you guys are the soul of our high school. And we miss every single one of you every single day. So in closing, I want to pledge this to our faculty, to our students, to our parents, and the Richland community as a whole. We remain focused on our mission. The, mi the mission of the Richland School District is empowering students to pursue excellence every day and we truly mean that and will truly focus on making sure that that mission statement is accomplished throughout this process it won't be easy 
No one said it's going to be. We are going to be flexible with your students. I hope you're flexible with us as we're trying to navigate waters that no one has ever navigated before during something like this. So again, just to reiterate the point that Mr. Masorjak made, we miss you. We can't wait to see you again in a normal high school setting, whatever that may be, but we're going to do our best to provide you the best possible in education that we can. And I'd just like to add, I'm not sure if you could hear or not, but there was a cell phone that went off and someone will be receiving a virtual detention uh, for that. It was mine. Have a great day, everybody. See ya.